to see all of you this morning. If you have a bulletin, Andy, let's go over things that are going on. Uh, we have a missionary couple with us this morning. We're glad to have them. They're friends of Bruce and Brenda. We'll try not to hold that against them. M Marius and Anna? Anna. Anna. Marius and Anna. All right. When he gets up here, he can straighten that out. Um, but they're going to be sharing in the 10 o'clock service this morning. Again, we're glad to have them. Workday this month will be the 26th. Hopefully, we're going to be working on the new edition. I'm trying to get all the other little stuff caught up so that we can focus on maybe uh, getting a little bit of drywall up in preparation for the uh, HVAC to be installed, which, by the way, I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and get that on the schedule. Uh, family day this month, 27th, you know the schedule for that, and then September work day, family day again. So I think that's all I need to tell you. So let's sing this morning. Hymn number 292. Uh, Bruce is going to come and leave. Stand if you're able. 292. 292. <laughs> Everybody. And we greet you with uh, uh, grace and peace may be uh, multiplied to you by the knowledge of our Lord.
thank you for the opportunity that we have to present the uh, ministry that has God has been called us to. By God's grace, I think seven years ago we've been here again. And it has been a real blessing to uh, see our friends again. You, you know who we're talking about. <laughs> Pe Bruce l-am cunoscut în 93. I met Bruce in 1993. Brenda și Bethany. Of course, Brenda and Bethany too. Căutam o slujbă și am fost invitat să lucrez în tipografia. I was searching for a job and I've been invited to uh, work in a print shop. Și pot să spun că el a fost, uh, pe lângă că a fost un frate mai mare pentru mine. And I can honestly say that Bruce has been like a big brother to me. Un instructor. A, a trainer. Uh-huh. Dar a fost și un mentor pentru but has been a, actually a, also a mentor to me. Am învățat multe lucruri, nu numai despre tipografie, cum să tipărești. I learned a lot of things from him, not how to print. Dar și cum să umbli uh, relația cu Dumnezeu. But also how to walk in your uh, in the relationship with your, with God. Prin model, atitudine și comportament. By the way, he model and uh, his attitude and his behavior. Pot spune că mi-a atins viața. And I can honestly say he touched my life. Deci, câteva cuvinte despre cum am întors la Domnul. A few words about how I became a Christian. Eram înainte de armată, înainte de a pleca în armată cu două zile, am muncit. Uh, it was two days before I was uh, uh, drafted into the army. În 1991. In 1991. Un tânăr mi-a, mi-a vorbit despre Dumnezeu uh, într-un mod în care nu am auzit până niciodată. One young guy started to talk to me about God in a way that I never heard it before. And that night I understood that I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. And I need to be uh, dependent on God. Because I understand that He is the one that created us and created us and he's the one that gives us a purpose in life. And I longed him for a long time to discover God and have a relationship with him. I was addicted to alcohol. But from that moment on, God relieved me from the desire to uh, drink alcohol. I sensed his uh, freedom and his, uh, he set me free. And for the first time I started to read the New Testament while I was still in the army doing my uh, uh, mandatory service. And I had a lot of fellowship times with Yosif, the guy that shared the gospel with me. He was drafted with me together. And God uh, started to, uh, uh, to uh, this fire in my heart to uh, start sharing about him. I uh, came back from the army. Uh, I uh, got baptized in a church, in a big church. And after that, I felt like God is calling me to be more involved in his work, and I started to do a lot of uh, missionary trips. I started to work with, as a volunteer with Campus Crusade for Christ International uh, starting in 1993 I was so passionate about sharing the uh, uh, God's uh, um, uh, plan of salvation that I would use the Jesus film, if you know that, showing this on the beaches and even on the ski clubs. <laughs> in big stadiums, parks, everywhere. Streets, in the middle of the streets. And I, I've seen the way that God used that ministry and uh, how he, um, he brought a lot of people to Christ and uh, I, I uh, grew in my faith. It was great to see uh, people that were transformed by His grace. In 2011, 
Am lucrat în tipografie aproape 20 de ani. Uh, I worked uh, in the printing for uh, 20 years almost, but in 2011. Am uitat să spun ceva despre Bruce, deși I forgot to say to mention something about Bruce. <laughs> deși nu înțelegeam foarte bine engleza, cunoșteam. Even though I did not understand much English. Orice spunea, eram de acord cu el. <laughs> Whatever he was saying, I would agree with him. Nu mai amintesc să să fi spus vreodată nu. I don't remember ever saying no to bro- no to Bruce, Bruce. <laughs> But we are still friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Deci, uh, în 2011, so in 2011, I joined uh, Campus Crusade for Christ International. Și tu vorbești cu mama deja. Yeah, in 2012, I started to work. Am simțit că Dumnezeu mă cheamă să intru în full-time lucrare. I felt the uh, desire and uh, the call to be full-time in the ministry. Noi ne-am întâlnit încă și pe Ani și... And I met Ani there, too. Am și căsătorit. And we got married in 2013. And we are here to share with you more about the ministry that God has called us to. Yeah. And our family grew with two girls, and we have Ellie and Maria over there. Maria is seven, and Ellie is five. And if you meet them and greet them, uh, uh, they do understand some English, but they don't speak very much. So uh, be patient to us. So um, I'm Annie. I'm what I call myself um, for Christ child was in my dorm room um, in university when two girls from Campus Crusade for Christ knocked on my door and they were doing a survey and they had five questions in that survey. And last question was, do you want to know how somebody can have a personal relationship with Christ? I was living in a so-called Christian country. 88% of the Romanians will declare themselves Christians. They are Orthodox Christian. But I never heard about personal relationship with Christ unless, until those girls came to, to our dorm. And to be honest, I said yes to the fifth question, but I, was th- I thought that that's kind of a little too bold for a human being to imagine that they can have a personal relationship with Christ. But I wanted to hear what they have to say, and they came to me, and they shared this booklet, Four Spiritual Law Booklet. And it was so crystal clear what God had done for us. And it was so crystal clear that the only way we can restore our relationship with Christ is through, to, to God is through Jesus Christ. That when they asked me to receive Christ as a personal Savior and Lord, I told them, hey, I like the Savior part. I don't like the Lordship part. <laughs> Let me think about that. But at that point, I was in a really low, the lowest point of my life. I was... Uh, on antidepressive because my brother committed suicide and he was my best friend and um, the orthodox priest they said uh, uh, suicide is a sin that cannot be forgiven so they did not want to perform even a burial service in the church they did something short in the courtyard of the church so for me it was really my family was really a hard time and I started to ask questions where we go after we die is there a way that to know for sure that we're going to go in heaven or not, or what to do with that. So not, and nobody seemed to have the answers. So when they, those two girls came to my room and shared the gospel with me, I was so happy because finally I thought, somebody has the answers. There is an answer in this world. And, uh, I do re- uh, and after I, as Mari said, after I prayed to receive Christ, from that moment on, I never took an antidepressive pill anymore. Mm-hmm because God had give me peace. The pain didn't go away of losing my brother. It took a while, but um, I started to become a little upset with Christians because they knew something so precious and nobody took the time to share with me. That's how I, that's how I felt. <laughs> and uh, I remember starting to share the gospel with my dorm uh, uh, room friends without even reading through the whole New Testament. I did not know you have to be a scholar in Bible before you share your faith. I knew something that's so important and I started to share. I graduated in finance and bank and I thought my job would be to make money and support missionaries. Well, in 1997, God decided to do something else. He called me to full time ministry 
And I realized there are so many other people that wanted to work in a bank and so very few people that wanted to work in the mission field or they can do this work because they don't have a personal relationship with Christ. I've seen many people since then joining, um, the, uh, accepting uh, God's love and uh, uh, restoration, but I've seen so many others that they did not want to accept that, and that's heartbreaking. And um, I, we work with college students, and I'm, we did prepare a, a, a few pictures, uh, and we're gonna watch it together, and we'll walk you fast through the presentation, and at the end, if you have any questions, who will be more than glad to uh, answer it. So this is who we are. We are Romanians serving in Romania. Do I need to step forward? It's good with a microphone. And if you don't know, this is where we are uh, in Eastern Europe and we border and Romanians have the uh, longest border with Ukraine. I'm not sure if you knew that, but uh, we have, a, we experience a lot of um, crisis in our area right now. So it's a beautiful country. You're going to see a lot of monasteries uh, and beautiful um, uh, castle and also beautiful people. So if you have a chance to come to Romania, please don't hesitate. We are still working with Bruce and Brenda to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> so our vision is to share the gospel with boldness so every student in Romania will know someone who truly follows Jesus. Not only hear the gospel, but see the gospel lived by uh, their friends, their peers. And our mini mission is if we're going to uh, talk to a Campus Crusade for Christ person, they will tell you that we, have, we are very big on three words, win, build, send. Win people for Christ, build them in their faith, and send them to do the same. Reach other with the gospel. And we do want to do that in the partner with the local churches. And our uh, specific ministry is what we call catalytic ministry. We work with college students in the uh, cities, university cities, where Campus Crusade for Christ don't have a local missionary teams. We have missionary teams in four cities in Romania, but there are 15 other university cities with no uh, uh, movement started by Campus Crusade for Christ. So our job is to go there in these cities try to find the local Christians, coach them, train them, envision them, and help them form a team that will take the, um, that will take the ownership of reaching their campuses for Christ. And we do that, uh, uh, this is uh, a few, one of the teams up there, it's uh, one of the team in our cities from Pitesh, and uh, a few of those uh, college uh, students they are college students now, but they became volunteers during the pandemic times when we did a lot of um, online events and they are really passionate about Christ. And this is one of our fast and prayer weekend um, where we have 30 to 40 people. Twice a year, we start every semester with a fast and prayer weekend because we believe that this is where we, uh, the battle is won for the soul of the people on our knees. And we come together from different cities and we pray and uh, we want to see God transforming the university cities we work in. Uh, we work now in five different cities and we're going to add a new one uh, this time. So what we do, we do a lot of evangelism. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one, uh, sharing the gospel and uh, uh, we wear this bracelet and this t-shirt and I'm going to explain exactly what that means. But Marius, he doesn't speak, I mean, he does speak English but he will not make a presentation in English here. But he, since we came here, he shared the gospel twice in English. One time with an AT&T guy, um, we were there trying to find a, a local number. Uh, he could not help us, he sent us to Walmart. But Morris sees an opportunity and started to share the gospel with him, say, hey, I have this interesting bracelet. You wanna hear the, what uh, these symbols represented? And he started to share the gospel. And when we started the conversation, uh, we were alone with, uh, in the store, but meanwhile, other people came in, and that guy seemed to be, continue to be interested, and Morris finished the presentation, and the end said, hey, I have, I can give you this bracelet, would you like to have it? And you can go on website, the floor, and find out more. Was there, he says, oh, sure, I will be happy to do that. So he, um, he put his uh, bracelet, thank you so much for coming here, and thank you for sharing with me. So, it's really easy, and um, sometimes we feel like 
people will not want to hear, but it's sometimes it's on our side not taking the initiative to, and you know, another time we were in um, Taco Bell, Taco Bell restaurant. It was this guy that were working in, a, in pub Publix because he had a, a name on his shirt and he heard us talking in Romania and he, asked, he came to us and said, are you Russian? He said, no, we are not Russians. <laughs> But we started a conversation and, you know, soon I realized Marius was not with us on the table. He was talking with this guy and sharing the gospel. And I have a picture to prove that, but I didn't put it here. <laughs> so we do a lot of evangelism, and I'm going to talk you more, uh, tell you more about how we use that. We do a lot of street evangelism. And on the right over there with the, the four t-shirt is Sarah. She became um, a volunteer with us when she, while she was still in uh, high school. And uh, she's one of the top students in her class. She, uh, in Romania, you need to apply for a university and you need to have an exam. She passed with the best grades. But she's very passionate about sharing the gospel. And uh, she invited us and we did a training on how to share the gospel with all the youth in her church. So 16, uh, the, uh, 16 14 to 20 years old um, uh, yeah, you, youth young people came to learn how to share the gospel and we went to share the gospel on the street. That's how we usually do. Can I come closer? So this is a, a questionnaire we do, discover your worldview. And we start here with, do you believe God exists? Yes, no, I don't know, I don't care. So based on that, we started to do this survey and discover their worldview. And then we, uh, we read what that worldview means and ask them, do you, this, does this represent you? Yes. And how did do, do you come uh, to this worldview? And this way we can find out where their spiritual journey has been until now. And then we tell them, I'm a Christian faith. Do you want to know how I come to this conclusion? How I come to this worldview? And may, most of the time, probably 85% of the time, because we, uh, we took the time to ask them about their worldview, they will listen to us. And uh, many times uh, we have great conversation. And we still do a lot of online uh, presentation. And this is one of the program. Uh, have you heard about John Maxwell? It's a for, yeah, it's a pastor, Baptist pastor, former pastor. He wrote a lot about leadership. He became very popular in Romania. He put together, they, their team put together a Beyond Success seminar that teach about leadership, but also in seven lessons, they, uh, the fifth lesson talks about a relationship with Christ. And you cannot read here in Romania, but in here it's actually a prayer to receive Christ. And we have this program going on now in a public, county public library in one of our city in Constanza. And we have three small groups meeting there with one of our volunteers, which in Romania, in public um, universities or in public county uh, uh, libraries, you usually cannot share the gospel freely uh, because that's called, uh, because Orthodox uh, church is still powerful. So if we want to do anything with the uh, um, uh, universities, uh, we need to have their approval, which they never give it to us. Uh, so, uh, but God has opened some doors that we are amazed and we want to step in through it because it's a special time. Uh, of course, we do a lot of discipleship and training, and on the right with a red sh uh, shirt is Henry. Morris invested a lot of time in Henry, and Henry becomes so passionate about Christ and so passionate about sharing the gospel. He will, he will talk to you about Christ in the first 10 minutes of the conversation. So actually, he decided to go to study and be a pastor, and he's even part of the uh, Christian radio. And this is what we do a lot of time small groups, training people, helping um, young people to step out in faith and share the faith. We do believe that the best missionaries for college students are college students. The best missionary for high school students are high school students because they are there day by day and they, um, uh, they can share and uh, people around them, they can see them. We do build a lot of bridges to go share the gospel with them and you're going to see some of them. But we want to train first them to be uh, bold disciples and uh, evangelists. And this is how we looked during the pandemic times. We had uh, 
really hard times during the pandemic. We've been locked down a number of times. While we were meeting here, the police patrol was circling the, um, hotel, the hotel where we're staying. It was a, a summer project in 2020, and we all got sick with COVID after that. So, but we said, hey, it was for a good cause. And everybody was good, nobody was hospitalized. More trainings, and um, this is just part of the team we were there. And, um, in Romania, if you hear, we are not called Campus Crusade for Christ, but we are called Choose Life. And it's really a good name for what we want to do. And we want for the students, what they learn from us, to share with others. So you uh, remember we told you uh, earlier about the fast and prayer weekend that we did twice a year? Well, two guys, Aline and Henry, that I was talking to you, they decided this is too good to be kept for our volunteers. So they decided let's do a fast and prayer weekend for our county, where we're going to invite all the churches, all the pastors, and see uh, if they want to come together to join and pray for our county. And they brought together 120 people from 10 different churches, and they all prayed for a weekend uh, for uh, um, God to do something amazing in their county. So we are really encouraged beyond what we told them, and God gave them. And uh, Rahela, she's one of our volunteers. She went to share the gospel in Serbia. Uh, Roxana, one of the girls that I mentor, she went to Rome, Italy, to share the gospel and help the local Churches, so they will go already beyond our borders. And some of you might know um, that the crisis affected Alaska for the last two years. We have been heavily involved helping Ukrainians. And this is the first humanitarian convoy that we did uh, after the, um, the war started in Rom Romania. And actually, Marius helped, or no, he led and helped organize and deliver 16 convoys into uh, Ukraine. And he can tell you a lot of stories about how it was there. He went all the way to Odessa and farther and Kiev too. So, and until three days ago, four days ago, we had three drivers on trial on uh, Ukraine. Uh, and it's a long story, but they've been accused of contraband because some of the stuff we brought, they were too good for them to believe that it was humanitarian aid. So they thought we were going to sell it. But uh, four days ago, we got the call that Morris and the other, one of the other driver, uh, they dropped the case. Yeah. So they are free, praise the Lord. We still have one driver that we wait for the trial. So we delivered a lot to soldiers, a lot of help. Uh, we did, and Morris was bringing a lot of times, a lot of refugees. From, uh, from the border, mainly women and children, because um, the husband had uh, to stay behind to fight. So unless you had more than three children or you are above 65 years old, you are not allowed to leave the country. Some did pay their way out, but that was the rule. And uh, we have a eight plus one van, but 13, 40 people will fit one, uh, from time to time in that van trying to uh, come and find shelter. And um, we deliver a lot of generators, especially to churches, um, because um, they are left without electricity a number of times. And deliver these uh, uh, generators to churches, that was really amazing because we could help the church become the heart of the community because people came there to charge their phones to get water, and also we deliver them food and clothing so they come and get uh, that from the churches. So it was really helping, and the churches are growing right now. People are very receptive to Christ. So, and that's how it looked like, more partnership. And also because uh, there were so many refugees in the country, the government could not help at all at the beginning. So we had to uh, transform four of our conferences room in dorms. We install bed, showers, dryer, washer in four. So all together we have 1,053 refugees hosted a month ago when we left from Romania with 14,000 nights of hosting. And 403 nights, one mother and her child stayed with us um, until they decided to go back home. In a different area because it was destroyed where they were living, but they went back to Ukraine. 
And after a while, we decided we cannot do that anymore. So in the back, this is our building or office. And in the back, we installed 12 um, containers. In t 10 of each, they are living uh, condition. They have uh, four beds and a shower and a bathroom. And two of them are uh, for a kitchen and um, uh, a laundry uh, room. So they, ca they still live there. 36 people are still living in our office, uh, more women. I told you about some bridges we need to build in order to reach college students because that's our focus. We use a lot of, who, did anybody here play pickleball or know about pickleball? No, no. Know about, well, Mari saw, see that opportunity seven years ago, he heard about pickleball in, in here in US and nobody heard about pickleball in Romania. So he thought that might be a great tool we can use in Romania. So he started to promote this. Uh, we had some portable equipment. Yes, he started to promote this to universities and high schools. And uh, we had different events. We had 120 people playing one time, 120 people playing another one time, but actually helps a lot of, uh, of creates a lot of opportunities to, to share the gospel. Because after we, share, we do one game, we have an opportunity to speak to the children or speak to the high school, uh, college students and even give them the bracelets. So it was really, and this is one of the university that uh, Mari started to um, uh, collaborate with. We have a collaboration with two, in two different cities with two universities where they, we went there and shared the gospel publicly. I told you that in university you cannot speak about God um, publicly, but in the gym room, after they play, we gave each of them a bracelet and we advertising from the beginning. It was nothing hidden. We tell them, um, come play pickleball and you're gonna receive uh, a bracelet with a four. And the professor asked us to um, share the gospel. We do a lot of career, emotional intelligence seminar, career planning seminars, just to get in touch with more students and after that, we cannot share the gospel publicly there, but we gave them the Christian principle. But after that, we meet them, we uh, invite them to a mentoring appointment, one-on-one, -on -one, when we can share the gospel freely. And we made the news with some of the, our events. And uh, it was in the, some of the newspaper, they wrote about us a lot. So our project right now is the four uh, we want to start kind of a movement. It's nothing new, but it's a new format. The same four spiritual law booklet that they shared with me when I became a Christian, it's more in a visual format right now. We have these kind of bro brochures. So um, especially young generation, they want to identify themselves with something. We want to give them a Christian uh, symbols to identify with. And um, what is this? God loves me, not only God loves everybody or God loves the Lord, uh, the world, but he loves me. I have sin, and sin is serious. It puts a wall between us and our Lord, and the wages of sin is death. Um, so either you have to pay for your own death or you have to accept that Jesus Christ died for me. But not everybody is safe because everybody needs to make a personal decision. So this is what we have wear it and share it. Uh, that's why you see us wearing and we uh, um, invited uh, Bruce to the movement so you'll see him wearing a shirt like that. <laughs> we can invite you to join the movement too. And uh, that's how Mario started to share the gospel. Vasile is not, he's a professor and he's not a believer but he was willing to listen and they talked about the gospel for one hour and a half I think. And when Mario was sharing about the scene Part. And she, you know what happened in the garden? And we did not get much response, but Rosvan, it was a, a, a professor that uh, was a believer. He shouted from the back, tell them what happened in the garden, because they know nothing. <laughs> so we did tell them what happened in the garden, but it was really uh, good to be uh, backed up by somebody that was a Christian. And usually the professors are not allowed to speak that freely. But they felt like, and of course, Mari shared the gospel with a lot of uh, custom officers. This is one of them, Leonid. Another one is a Moldovan custom officer. We can tell you more stories about that. But um, 
he has been a great uh, opportunity to share the gospel as he was doing a lot of humanitarian transport. So uh, we actually want to make this a movement with the four, but also we're going to um, uh, help a lot of churches train their volunteers in how to share the gospel in a clear way. And we want to make it self-fund, self-supporting, because we're going to open an online store to, some of, uh, to sell some of these products. It can be easily um, uh, used. We've seen people doing flash mobs on the right hand corner, painted on their walls, sharing uh, the faith, and even on the glide, you can put it. And a lot of people, what we want to see is people wearing and ask, what is that? And I've been asked three times since I am in the US, what, what is that represent when I was wearing this? And our vision is that in five years, we're going to train 1,000 volunteers in 15 cities how to share the gospel and how to make disciples. And we're going to do that in partnership with local churches. And we'll have manuals that we translated and everything. So, of course, we're going to, one of the reasons we come uh, to U.S. is to meet some of our friends, of course, but it's also to uh, invest, uh, invite people to invest and join us in this movement and be part of this. Um, I'm not going to uh, share, uh, we have on the four website, there is actually, um, um, hold on. There is actually four videos that explain very well um, uh, the love of God, the sin part, um, and I'm not sure, I think we already passed the time. Do we have time for to watch the video for two minutes? We are already, yeah. okay? Okay. God loves you unconditionally. He has always loved you and he will love you forever. His love for you has no boundaries. He loves you just as you are, just as he made you. Even if you see yourself as a failure, even if you've completely rejected God, God does not love you any less because of that. God is love. A father doesn't love his child because the child does great things. He loves his child because it is his child. Even if a child makes a big mess of things, a father still loves it because it is his child. We as human parents can love our children despite of their mistakes. Won't God who created us love us even more? God wants nothing more than for you to experience his love. His passion is for you to have a personal relationship with him and to give you a purpose and meaning in your life. So you might ask yourself, why then is life so difficult? And if God is love, why don't I feel it? So this is on a website and uh, even somebody that very comfortable at the beginning to talk, they can play the video and then talk, oh, how do, did you experience God's love? And then they can play the part, the video with, you know, we have seen, you have seen, and they can talk about that. So it's a lot, it's, it's meant to be easy to use, so it encourages more young people to take the initiative. So that's what we do. We want to be, if we go to a church and we tell them we want to do the training for your youth people, we want for you to be a, in a partnership with us and for you to have a follow-up. What do you do for follow-up? So we're not going to waste the uh, the fruits that God may bring so um, and we uh, invite people to join us and uh, uh, we have different forms of investing uh, or helping us with different uh, projects um, and we'll, we'll have more information on that if you want to help us and uh, we do think it's a highly effective um, tool that we can um, train people, and also um, this is one project we look for mainly for a, a one-time donation, but also you can help us stay in full-time ministry like Brenda and Bruce is, are doing, and this is our personal account that helps us stay in full-time ministry and get our salary. So 
And we are the representative for Romania, for two in each country. We have those. So if you want to get in touch with us, this is our uh, email address. We'll have more information in the back. You can take one of these and find out more about that. So that would be the presentation in this morning. We do hope you got a little encouraged about what God is doing across the ocean. And there are a lot of stories we could tell you. Any question you might have right now before we finish this? Or okay. We'll be there in the back for more questions and uh, you can ask Bruce and Brenda some questions too <laughs> about that. Somebody need to turn off my Thank you, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My mic is still on. Are you out of breath? I'm trying to see what to do with this microphone because it's still on. Do you know oh, how to turn this off? Job. Good. 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 Good